Oh god! Do not worry. Listen to me, everyone. Huh? Who's that? I don't know. I haven't seen him in our ship before. Steer to the left. It looks like he knows what he is doing. Do as he says. Steer to the left. The crew obeyed this stranger's commands without knowing who he actually was. Head north. Did you hear him? Head north as he says. The captain and the crew sailed the ship as this stranger was telling them. This stranger guided the ship safely through the storm. Slowly, they could see the sun and the clouds disappeared. And finally, they reached Asia Minor. We made it! We made it! <laughs> yes, sir! We made it! Thank you, God! Where is that stranger who helped us? It is he who we must thank for saving our lives. I can't find him here. Let me look for him in the lower decks. Captain! Captain! What happened? Did you find him? No, Captain. I searched the whole ship. I can't find him anywhere. I checked with our crew and everyone says they had never seen him before the storm happened. He... he has disappeared. What? How could that be? It's true, Captain. Nobody knows who he is and where he went. Hmm. Anyways, he did help us arrive safely in Asia Minor. We'll go to the local church in Myra today to thank God for saving us. The captain and the crew went to the cathedral in Myra to thank God for saving them from the storm. Bishop Nicholas was celebrating the Mass along with the local people. Captain, look! What happened? Look at the bishop! <laughs> oh my god! He was the stranger who guided our ship through the storm! Huh? But he's the bishop! Then how? The captain and the crew realized that it was a miracle. They fell on their knees and thanked the bishop for saving their lives. May God bless you. The bishop blessed them and spoke to them for some time. They remembered his words for the rest of their lives. And that's why sailors now have St. Nicholas as their patron saint. It was not just the sailors and the rich who got favors from Bishop Nicholas. The bishop was always kind to the poor and needy, and he always spread happiness interacting with the workers in the fields. It is such a beautiful day. While he was strolling in the fields one day, he saw a small boy carrying food and water, more than he was able to carry. Hello there. Huh? Bishop, I am carrying food and water for my family. That looks like more than you carry. Come on, let me help you. Give me the basket. But, but, you are the bishop. So what? Come on, give me the basket and I'll help you carry it to your family. Here, Bishop. All right. Now, where's your family working? Over there, Bishop. All right. Let's start walking then.
That's my mother and that's my sister. And what about your father? Where is he? He he Bishop, that was so kind of you to help my son. Oh, that was nothing. By the way, I was asking him about his father. Where is he? My husband. They're going to kill him. What? What happened? It was the money lenders. We had borrowed money from the money lender and when we couldn't pay them back in time, they took my husband away. Not just my husband, they took two other farmers too. But didn't you talk to the governor about this? The governor is taking side of the money lenders. Those rich men bribe the governor too, so that they can get the farmers killed and make an example out of them. That's ridiculous. Don't worry, I'll take care of this. The bishop got very angry when he came to know that innocent men were about to get killed. He hurried to the place of execution. But by the time he reached there, the executioner was about to kill the men. Stop it! Huh? Who is that? That? That's Bishop Nicholas. Oh, I think we are in serious trouble. Don't worry. We will take care of him. Jailer? Yes, Bishop. I'm commanding you to release these men immediately. But, but the governor. Where is the governor? I am here, Bishop. How dare you give orders to execute these innocent men? What crime did they commit? They, they... They, they have failed to repay the loans they took from us. That's why the governor gave us such an order. Are you the one who loaned the money? Y yes Bishop. Do you know what God has in store for evil men like you? You are going to rot in hell. Even your family will have to suffer because of your evil deeds. You are going... That's enough. We are sorry. We are sorry for our mistakes. Please, Bishop, please give us a chance to repent ourselves. We are sorry. We will never do this again. We don't want our money back. Seeing that these men were truly sorry, Nicholas decided to forgive them. Hmm, all right. You must forgive their debts and the debts of all farmers in Myra. Do you agree? Yes. That's very good. Now change your evil ways and follow the path of the Lord. May God bless you. Bishop Nicholas was known for his cool-headed nature, but it wasn't always so. In AD 325, Emperor Constantine convened the Council of Nicaea. More than 300 bishops came from all over the world to debate on the nature of the Holy Trinity. One day, it was the turn of Arius, bishop from Egypt, to speak about the Holy Trinity. He was arguing that Jesus, Son of God, was not equal to God the Father. How can Jesus be included in the Holy Trinity? He was just a son, and he cannot be equal to God the Father. Jesus was just a creation, just like everything else. Huh? What is this fool saying? Jesus therefore cannot be considered divine. As Arius continued vigorously, Nicholas became more and more agitated. Finally, he could no longer contain himself. That's enough! You fool! How dare you say that Jesus was not divine? Huh? Huh? Bishop Nicholas, what have you done? I know what I did. This fool should not be allowed to talk anymore. How dare he speak like that about Jesus Christ? I'm ready to face any consequences for slapping this idiot. Bishop Nicholas, 
What were you thinking? I'm not sorry for what I did. You can give me any punishment that you feel like. Hmm. I'm sorry to say this, but this act of yours cannot be pardoned at all. We must strip you of your title as bishop. It was not just his title. They also stripped Nicholas of his bishop's garments. They then took the book of scriptures from him and then chained him. Then they put Bishop Nicholas in a prison till the final sentence was announced. God, did I do anything wrong? I know I shouldn't have lost my temper, but I just couldn't bear him talking about you like that. If you think I've done anything wrong, then please punish me. Then, suddenly, Jesus and Mary appeared before him. Nicholas. Huh? God? Huh? Mother Mary? Nicholas, why are you in jail? I... I'm here because of my love for you. The bishop couldn't believe his eyes when the chain fell off his hands. Then Jesus gave him a book of Gospels. Then Mother Mary gave him an omophorian, and Nicholas was again dressed as a bishop. <laughs> Jesus and Mother Mary disappeared after that, and Nicholas, who was now at peace, studied the scriptures for the rest of the night. When the jailer walked in the next day morning, he was surprised to see Nicholas in bishop's attire. What? How? How could this happen? Do not be afraid. Please go and inform Constantine about what you saw here. He will understand. Emperor! Emperor! <sighs> what happened? Why are you running? Bishop Nicholas, he... he... He's no longer a bishop, Jailer. Don't you remember we stripped him off his clothes yesterday? He's back in his attire again. What? The chains have fallen off. And he... he... he's in his cell reading the scriptures. I can't believe it. Show me his cell. When the emperor arrived at the prison, he was surprised too. But now he realized the divinity of Bishop Nicholas and asked him for his forgiveness. Bishop Nicholas, I am so sorry. There is no need, emperor. I should have controlled my temper yesterday. We will fully reinstate you as the Bishop of Moira and we will draw a special creed with your views on the Holy Trinity. Thank you, Emperor. A special creed was drawn up, and to this day at the Mass we pray, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, and born of the Father before all ages, God of God. The name and fame of Bishop Nicholas had spread far and wide, one day, as the story goes, a wealthy man from Asia sent his two sons to Athens to be educated. He asked the boys to stop over at Myra and seek the blessings of Bishop Nicholas. The boys arrived at Myra at midnight. Huh, I'm very tired. 
We should get some rest now. Yes, let's find out if they have any place to stay. We'll go and meet the bishop tomorrow morning. What is it? What do you want? Is this an inn? Yes, and this is a butcher shop as well. Tell me what you want quickly, or I'm going to cut you into pieces. We are here to find out if you have any place to stay for us tonight. We will pay you in gold. Ha, of course. Pardon me for being rude to you before. It's just that these kids around here keeps playing pranks at my door. That's all right. We were looking for a place to stay so that we can visit the Archbishop tomorrow and be on our way back to Athens. Well, well, well. Why are you going to Athens? We are going there for our studies. Aha! You must be very rich if your parents are sending you to the Athens for studies. How does that concern you? Just tell us if you have any rooms available or not. If you don't have, then we will be on our way. I'm so sorry. Yes, of course. We do have plenty of rooms available here. You may choose anyone you like. Now the innkeeper was a very wicked man. And when he saw the boys' jewelry and luggage, he decided to rob them and then murder them. When the boys were asleep, he slowly crept up to their room and killed them. To conceal his terrible deed, the cruel innkeeper then dumped their bodies in a pickling tub. He then took all their gold and other belongings. <laughs> now all their gold is mine and no one is ever going to know what happened. But the wicked innkeeper was wrong. The good Bishop Nicholas saw all his wrongdoings in his dream. He put on his pontifical robes, for he was an archbishop now, and took his crozier with him. He left immediately for the inn. Who is this at this hour? Archbishop, how? I mean, why are you here at this time? You greedy fool! Do you have any idea what you have done? What? I, I'm sorry. Forgive me, my lord. Please forgive me. Ha! Now show me where you have put their bodies. It's, it's in the pickling room. Come with me, sir. They... they are in that tub. Bishop Nicholas walked toward the tub and put his hands into it. He then said, And the boys were back alive. Ha ha ha! The boys recovered their possessions, and they resumed their journey rejoicing at their luck. St. Nicholas was regarded as the special protector of boys and students from that hour. Nicholas served as an archbishop and looked after his people for many more years. Everybody in Mira loved him so much. It is believed that as Nicholas came to the end of his life, he prayed that God would send his angels to receive his spirit. When Nicholas saw the angels coming down, he spoke the psalm. He gave up his spirit and died in the year of A.D. 343. Wow! That was such a wonderful story. Saint Nicholas will be my favorite saint ever. <laughs> That's wonderful, Jim. 
Uncle, are there any stories of miracles that took place after the saint's death? Of course, there are so many. Hmm, let me tell you one of the famous stories that took place after his death. After the death of Saint Nicholas, the people of Mira celebrated Nicholas's day every year. On that day, the children received presents, and even the beggars of the city also received food and clothes. On the evening of one such Nicholas's day, a certain family was celebrating and having a very happy time. <laughs> Go on, my child. Open one of the gift. Shall I? Yes, of course. But just as he was unwrapping the presents, two men came barging inside the room carrying swords. Father. Who? Who are you? What does it look like? Give us your youngest son and we will spare your lives. No, not my son. Do as I say, or this one is going to get killed. Now! The men snatched the boy from his family and took him on their shoulders. These wicked men rode to the harbor, and when they needed some money, they sold the boy to the king. The king liked this boy as he neither spoke nor understood his language. Meanwhile, the parents of the boy were sad and prayed to Saint Nicholas every day. The next year, on the day of Saint Nicholas, the family was once more gathered inside their house. This time there were no celebrations as they grieved the loss of their son. Huh? What's that noise outside? I will go and look. When the father opened the door, he was so happy to see his son standing outside the door. My son! You are here. Lord saved you, my son. But how did you come back? Who saved you? I don't know, father. I was standing next to the king just a few moments ago. That's when Saint Nicholas appeared and he took me from there. Father, mother, I came flying in air. Ha ha ha. What? It's true, father. Nicholas carried me in air. Look, I even have the water jug still in my hand. Thank you, Saint Nicholas. Thank you for saving my child. Wow! Then how did Saint Nicholas become Santa Claus? Hmm, there are many stories behind it. I think it was carried from the tradition of Saint Nicholas leaving gifts at poor people's homes. Do you remember the story of the poor man and his three daughters? Oh yes, Saint Nicholas had left the gold in his stocking. Haha, <laughs> exactly. But there are many, many other versions for Santa Claus, too. That was a very good story, Uncle. Thank you, my dear. When do we celebrate the day of Saint Nicholas? We celebrate December 6th as the day of Saint Nicholas. And here is the prayer of this saint. Saint Nicholas, protector of those who sail at sea, pray for us. Saint Nicholas, defender of the true faith, Pray for us. Saint Nicholas, patron of the children around the world, pray for us. Saint Nicholas, secret giver of gifts, pray for us. <laughs>